Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, so we get a nice quick data frame tutorial for you guys. If you come from Python, you know how powerful data frames are when you're working with like tabular data. Now, let me go show you guys what I mean by tabular data. So tabular data is like most of the times you're gonna be working with CSV files that can be represented as graphs. Um, so like, this CSV file can be represented as, uh, I'm sorry, not graph, table. And this JSON file can be represented as a table. Um, this one I web scraped, so some, some entries can be a little weird. But yeah, you don't want to represent this in your, in your program as like a two-dimensional array. Because then you have to do manually all the functionality of sorting it, filtering it, checking if there's no values. When you use a package like Goda, which is this file right here this github repository you get all of these nice functions that are already provided for you that you can open a csv file with you can um, load it from a struct you can filter you can check if there's null values pretty much it's very handy and will make your production time way better also data frames is a, a data structure that's totally made for tabular data so it will increase the performance of your of your uh, program if you use data frames. So uh, let's go ahead and install Goda. So what you have to do here is uh, go to go.dev and in their packages tab, uh, click that and type in Goda. And the first thing that pops up should be Goda right there. And they don't have an installation tab, but you just copy and paste this repository they have. And you go ahead and go into your um, I already made one, but let me make another one just so follow along. Just make a go mod in it command and whatever module name you want, you can type it in. And now you can do the go get command and you can just copy in that repository you copied earlier. Uh, and there we go. So now when we check our go mod, you should see go to and you should see the go sum. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to our main.go, which I think I deleted, so let's just make it again. <laughs> All right, so within your uh, main, you wanna actually do an import statement. You know, this stuff is pretty easy. I don't think I even should include it in the videos anymore, but it's good for people who are just seeing this. So you just make an import statement and you put in the repo, but within the repo, you actually wanna do the data frame uh, sub package. So just go ahead and put data frame in there and we are good to go. So the first thing you wanna do, of course, when you're uh, working with uh, data is you wanna open it. So let's go ahead and open it. So we say file comma error is equal to OS dot open. And now OS is uh, the OS package. It should just auto import for you. And you wanna provide the path to your file. So let's do that. All right. And I'm not sure why it's not importing for me. So let me just do it by hand. All right, so now once you actually uh, do that statement, you wanna handle the error. So it should be nil, okay. Just log that fatal. Uh, the error, and we should should import log here. Usually it does it for me. Not sure what's wrong with my IDE right now. Um, and then this is where you're actually going to be using Goda. You want to go ahead and say df is equal to data frame dot read csv and just give it the file that you have and you should be good. Um, again, I'm not sure why it's not giving me auto completion. Oh yeah, it's giving me errors because I have to use it. So let's just go ahead and print line this. All right guys, so now that that's uh, it's working, let's go ahead and run this. Yeah, let's just go, go run dot and you can see our data frame is right there. So now we've we've gone over how to open a CSV file and read it with Goda. Uh, now we can also do pretty much the exact same thing with our JSON file. So we can just copy and paste this. 
uh, we can say endangered fish you say that JSON and now the, you have to switch up the function though you have to read it JSON all right let's go guys my auto completion is back and now if I run this you'll see my JSON file instead and there you go so that's how you open up files which is pretty easy um, so this part you could say is opening files but now say sometimes in real life scenarios you're put into a project that you haven't ever seen the data set and you're not really sure what's going on maybe you experience an error and maybe it's a problem with uh, the dimensions of the data frame maybe you're going out of bounds so what you want to do is have a bunch of uh, or Goda has a bunch of uh, f functions that allow you to understand what's going on within the data frame so let's just go and make this section called analyzing data frame and we're going to go ahead and actually have this pre-typed out just to save some time um, let's get rid of this right here actually I think we'll keep that actually yeah so uh, I do want you guys to see this code at least so you guys know what's being printed out into the console let's just clear this and we're gonna say go run dot um, I don't think I saved let me run that one more time okay guys so you can see uh, when I actually print out the data frame, this is the whole entire data frame along with the dimensions and the object. So 105 is referring to the rows and 4 is referring to the columns. It's telling you that it's not showing the year column. It should be around here, but you know there's not enough space. Um, but yeah, so when we run the dims, the dims function, it tells you 105 rows by 4 columns. When we run the number of columns, we get four. When we run the number of rows, we get 105. Then we get the names of the columns, the dot names. And then we also get the types. Now, this isn't too exciting, right? It's pretty, pretty boring, I would say. Um, but sometimes it could save you some time debugging. So it's, pre it's pretty useful, I would say. Uh, let's just comment this out real quick. And let's run one more function that's used for uh, debugging. We're not really debugging, but just analyzing your uh, data frame. We can say describe, and we can just go ahead and clear this. We can go around that, and now you can actually see um, since this data frame is mostly string objects, actually all of it is string. This is not really gonna be much use. Let's switch to our CSV file actually. So let's just comment that out. Let's make this read CSV. Okay, now let's run this one more time. So this is nice because we can see our, our mean for the columns. Um, yeah, this is really handy for every row. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this one's a much more useful a function, I would say, because it provides you data based on the columns. And uh, yeah, guys, describe is probably one of the best ones for analyzing your data frame. Alright, so let's go ahead and go into uh, querying your data frame. So let's just go ahead and clear this. Sorry guys, a bit winning, winging this video. Just trying to make, make it so you guys can see the data frame the best you guys can, you know? Uh, this part will be, let's say querying slash transforming. All right, and let's get this readme file up here. Let's just put that to the side a bit. All right, so uh, querying the data frame, right? So say you want to select um, a certain row or a certain column from your data frame. Now you can use the select and subset functions. We can say column one is equal to df.select and since we're working with our, our CSV file, we can go ahead and say like year, right? And this should return like straight 2008. So let's go ahead and print this. Sorry guys, uh, and call one, 
right? So this should just print out 2008s. Yep, and it did. And now this is still a data frame object though. Um, you know, there's a thing called series. A series is one dimensional. Data frame is usually two dimensional. Uh, let's go over row and then let's go over the difference between series and data frames. So let's go ahead and say row one is equal to df dot subset. And now subset um, is used for getting a row. Now, the way you get rows isn't by the column name. It's actually by an index. So zero will get the first row in the data frame. So let's just go ahead and do that. So that, that was the column. And now this is the, the row. So this it shows you it's Indonesia, 2008, the total powered but or the total boats, the non-powered and the powered. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can see that this is po pretty powerful if you're using like a for loop and you're iterating uh, using an in index variable that's just iterating through the for loop. You can put that in here. Like say you just put the, the index right there. It's going to go through all the, the rows in your data frame. So that's pretty useful. Uh, but the thing is that these are all data frame objects. So these are data frame objects guys. What's more useful is getting a series. So let's go ahead and show you guys what I mean. Um, actually we're going to comment this out. So let's go ahead and show you guys what I mean. So let's say ds is data series. We're going to say df.call. Now if actually I look in call right here, um, it returns a series. You can see the return value is a series. Um, so I know you guys are probably like, what's the difference, right? It's still going to be pretty much one dimensional. Well, now if I go to DS, I can say all of these functions are not available for data frames. However, for data series, it's available. So it has uh, NAN, which means it's checking for null values. Is NAN checks the specific index where it is a null value. Uh, all of these things are now available for you. So we can actually see uh, if this column, this column year has no value. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can say DS has any N and I'm pretty sure it doesn't since I'm pretty sure it's a small data set um, false, right? So we can go into 2008's CSV. We can just delete this. And now if we run this, it's going to be true. So it, it works, guys. It really does work. Um, say uh, we're working with a much larger one. Uh, and you wanted to find the index, or you find it, wanted to find out the exact index of the row that has the, the null value. You can do is NAN. And now this will tell you exactly where. So let's just add 2008 back here. Now let's just pick a random 2008. Let's make that. Let's make that null. So now if we run this, um, it's actually going to give you an array, array of booleans. You see this? Um, you see this is where the null value has been detected. So all you have to do is get this null or get this array of booleans loop through it and once you find the the true statement well then that's where exactly in the row you have the null value and you know you can do this with the for loop and it's pretty easy so that's how you do it with go um, you know python has a lot more functionality but it's still possible in go and it's probably 10 times faster since go is compiled language and python is interpreted so uh, yeah, let's, I think we're good with querying the database. Um, now we can work on transforming. But actually, I think I wanted to go over s sorting and filtering. So let's just make this sorting and filtering. All right, so I think that's good. We're going to comment this out. All right, so you want to use the uh, sorting value. So uh, before I forget, I have to add this 2008 back. 
All right, so we're going to say uh, df is equal to df dot arrange. Now, arrange is used uh, hand in hand with sorting. So just use df dot arrange. And you want to press enter. And then you want to use go to again. So you do data frame. And then they give you um, two functions. So sort is ascending and reverse sort is descending. So let's say we wanted to uh, sort the, let's say the total powered boats or just the total boats in general ascendingly, we can just say data frame dot sort and we can say total and just make sure to put a comma there since it does accept multiple, uh, multiple parameters. Now we can just go ahead and do fmt.println df and now we should be able to see our data frame sorted. So now you can see uh, these are sorted by uh, total boats and they are descending, meaning the lowest value is at the top and it keeps rising all the way to Indonesia because Indonesia is the country and all of these are like cities of Indonesia. Don't mind the data set, it's just a little dummy data set I have for my, one of my projects. Um, but now you can do reverse sort also. So if you want to do uh, descending, you can do that. And there you go, you get the total boats descendingly. So Indonesia is on top, and you get the city with the most um, boats. So yeah, that's cool. All right, so that's good. Now say we wanted to do filter. So let me just go ahead and see how I did filter. <coughs> so we can say df is equal to df.filter and it takes a f object so we're going to say data frame dot f and now belief here it, let's, let me see how I did it in my my project a little bit of, uh, okay so you specify let's see the column index the column name the comparator okay so you, you do the column index and the column string. Ah, so it needs two, two okay, okay. All right, so we're gonna say uh, the column index here would be, hmm, what do we wanna filter, guys? I think we're gonna do total again. So let's just do total, and this would be index two. So we're gonna say two total. And we're gonna say greater than, and we're just gonna say 40,000. I think that's good. It's giving me an error. I think I just gotta put a comma there. Um, and yeah, let's run this. Let's see if it works. So this should get all the all the records with 40,000 and above. So let's go ahead and run that. And yeah, you can see it did filter out some of them. So there's only eight in here when usually there's 12. So Indonesia's course is up there and yeah you can see which ones are are there now we can sort these as well so let's go ahead and sort it so we can actually just copy this <laughs> okay now that we save that let's go ahead and run it All right, now you can see it's sorted descendingly. And yeah, West Sumatra does meet the cut just barely by 50,000, so that's good. All right, guys, um, I think, I'm sorry, not 50,000, 5,000, cannot count. All right, so that's good. Uh, filtering, arranging. Now we're gonna cover expansion, and I think that'll be it for the video. So let's go ahead and do expansion. Um, expanding would be the last section. So expanding your data frames is quite easy actually. So when you when you uh, expand vertically, your data frames have to have the exact same column. That's why I put two of these here, 2008 and 2009. Hold on, this this is bugging me. This should be capital Y. All right capital Y and you can see that both of them have the exact same column names so we're gonna use these as a nice little example so let's just go ahead and open that too we can just copy and paste that and we can say file to 
2009.csv. And let's just read this real quick. It's file two. And this is data frame two. All right, so all we have to do, it's pretty easy. We can just, as long as the requirements are met, guys, it's very important they have the same exact column names. You can say df is equal to df.concat. And we can just put in df2. And now these are gonna get all the 2008 and 2009 um, reports of how many boats are there are in Indonesia. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you can see, unfortunately I can't like show you guys, uh, but 24, 24 rows. So it expanded vertically, right? There's 24 rows now. I can actually maybe do a sort so I can show you guys. Let's do df.sort. I mean, df is equal to df.arrange uh, data frame.sort. Let's do reverse sort. So 2009 is at the top. And we can just say year. All right. And this should show you the 2009 entries. And you can see the 2009 entries are in there. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that's how you expand vertically. Now you want to expand uh, horizontally. So we can use our JSON file for this, since the only thing with uh, expanding horizontally, you have to have a unique ID, meaning that like a unique column that they share. So luckily for us, um, this JSON file has a year column. So let's just go switch this back to underscore Y because they do have to match. They are case sensitive. <clears throat> so uh, let's go ahead and open that JSON file. Just say files three. And we can just say df3 is equal to data frame dot read JSON. And we can say file three. And now to expand it horizontally, uh, all we have to do is just say df is equal to df dot inner join and now inner join is a bit different let's let's see what it you have to give it so you have to give it uh, the data frame and the keys so let's go pass in data frame 3 and we're gonna join it on year and let's uh, comment this out um, I think it should work it's gonna give us an error because file two is not being used. Okay. So let's, uh, let's test this out. <laughs> now the records number of rows should, shouldn't really increase. Uh, it's probably will be because endangered fish is a much bigger data set, but the number of columns will definitely increase guys. So let's go ahead and run this and you can see, um, 12 by eight, Okay, okay, so the number of rows didn't increase because the number of rows is dependent on the first data frame that you're doing inner join on. Um, meaning if I did it with, if I did df3 equals df3 dot inner join df instead, it would have the number of rows that df3 has. So don't mind the rows right now. What you guys should focus on is that, um, here, let me do this. DF and rows. See guys, these these are functions are not to be slept on. They're actually pretty nice for teaching. Uh, okay, so if we print these out, it should give us five and three. Uh, I didn't save. Okay. Let me just go ahead and clear. Oh, it's not showing me actually. What's going on? Oh, it's because I'm not print lining them. Okay. Sorry, guys. One second. Yeah, let's just copy and paste this. Okay, guys. Now it should work. So you see 12 rows. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Okay, so 12 stays the same, right? 12 stays the same because data frame is what's being joined. But if we do number of columns, so let's do number of columns. 
when you're expanding horizontally the number of columns is what's being expanded so if we do this one more time you can see five and four um excluding the year since that's what's going to be joined on uh which if you exclude the year uh you just subtract one off the total so five plus four is nine minus one and that's the dimensions of the columns so you're expanding it horizontally and if we were to let's say just get one single let's just get the first one let's just say df dot select and it would be zero um let's just go ahead and print line this let's do it at the bottom actually hopefully we can get the number of columns or the name of the columns Sorry, I'm prolonging this video, guys. Uh, all right, guys. So we get the number of. I'm sorry, I should be subset. <laughs> okay, so you get the year, you get the country, then you get the region and the species, which does belong to the JSON file. So if you guys see, the JSON file does have the region and the species and the status. That's the only one that it's not showing right here status so yeah that's, that's how you actually expand vertical or horizontally so uh, i know the ending probably got a little bit um confusing but all in all we covered how to expand horizontally and vertically we covered how to query for a column in a row and how to check for null values and sort them and filter them as well uh, and then we covered some functions that analyze your data frame that's very useful. And we've covered how to open them. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm going to try to master Golang eCharts so I can show you guys how to visualize your data much better. And yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. I'll be uh, uploading probably next Friday. So take care. Peace out.